Welcome everyone. This is our second episode in our video series about sensors and their microcontroller interfacing. I invited you to watch the whole video series to have better understanding of our design workflow. But if you have better understanding in any of the videos, you can jump over to the next video or the video that you are interested on. Here in this video, we will select a desired sensor for our application and study its mathematical behavior, the input and output relationship. Finally, we will quantify the nonlinearity of the sensor analytically. You can find the playlist link of the whole video series in the description below. If you like the video and find it useful, please give me your like so that YouTube can help me recommending it to others. Subscribe and set the notification bell to all for more of our future videos. Okay, this was our project. We are asked to design an air conditioner for an office of a certain campus whose environmental temperature varies in the range of minus 5 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade. So our task should begin by selecting an appropriate sensor and find a manufacturer and get its data sheet. For this application, extreme accuracy is not my concern. I need to have a temperature sensor that can be applied for home or office air conditioning system with a minimum cost. From the four commonly used temperature sensors, thermistors can go well for this application. To know the detailed characteristics of each of the four temperature sensors, you can watch our first episode by clicking right above here. So thermistors can measure a temperature range from minus 55 degrees centigrade to 125 degrees centigrade and our application lies under this temperature range. So I selected thermistor families but to get one let's find a manufacturer and get its data sheet. Vishai BC components manufacture electronic devices and sensors like thermistors. I browse up this data sheet from their website www.vishai.com. The thermistor from this vendor gives resistance as a function of temperature with an exponential relationship of this. The resistance value for a detected temperature equals R25 or the resistance at 25 degrees centigrade times E is a power of B times 1 over T minus 1 over 298.15, where R25 is a resistance at 25 degrees centigrade and B is a material constant expressed in Kelvin. This manufacturer produces different types of negative temperature coefficient thermistors. Among those, I selected this one, NTC LE100 E3, and I browsed a specific data sheet for this component. As you can see, this is a general characteristics of such sensors, radial leaded stranded precision thermistors that gives resistance from 3.3 ohm to 470 kilo ohm. And they can measure temperature in a range from minus 40 degrees centigrade to 125 degrees centigrade. And this sensor has a maximum power dissipation at 55 degrees centigrade or 500 milliwatt. Specifically, I'm going to use this sensor. It gives 1.5 kilo ohm at 25 degrees centigrade with a B value of 3528 Kelvin. And it has this resistance color coding brown green red after having this information i am going to jump to my analytical perspectives so now we have the input output relationship between resistance and temperature of this exponential function and from the data sheet we get r25 is equal to 1500 ohm or 1 1.5 kilo ohm and beta is 3528 Kelvin. And this function is expressed where RT is in kilo ohm and T is in degree Kelvin. We can draw this exponential function in our measurement range from 
minus 5 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees centigrade and those are the end pointers here at minus 5 degrees centigrade the resistance value from this exponential function is 5.6368 kilo ohm and while at 50 degree centigrade the resistance value is also 0.6005 kilo ohm from this function you can observe that resistance decreases as temperature increases that's why we call those thermistors as negative temperature coefficient thermistors we have a maximum resistance of 5.6368 kilo ohm at a minimum temperature of minus 5 degree centigrade while we get a minimum resistance value at maximum temperature value. The ideal straight line can be drawn by connecting those two points. We draw or we find the equation of a straight line connecting those two points. Let's find the straight line equation passing through minus 5 degree centigrade and 5.6368 kilo ohm and 50 degree centigrade and 0 0.6005 kilo ohm. Let's find the slope m y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x which equals minus 0 0.0916 kilo ohm per degree Kelvin by using this slope and taking one of the points we can find the straight line equation as y is equals to minus 0 0.0916 ax plus 30.1993 in our case y is the resistance rt and x is the temperature t so this is our equation therefore this is a straight line and its corresponding equation is this one as you can see from the graph the actual exponential function in the ideal straight line function has a variation there is a variation so this variation can be quantified by the nonlinearity for example let's see the, the nonlinearity present at 10 degrees centigrade the nonlinearity as a full scale deflection is equal to the nonlinearity, that is the difference between the actual and the ideal values at a particular point over the maximum variation of the output. In our case, the resistance, the maximum range, the range between y resistance maximum minus resistance minimum times 100% expressed in percent. So at 10 degrees centigrade, the actual resistance value RT by using the exponential function equals 2.8076 kilo. And the ideal resistance RT obtained from the ideal straight line is 4.2628 kilo. So the difference or the nonlinearity at 10 degrees centigrade is that is the difference between those two resistance values, the ideal and the actual value, which equals 1.4552 kilo ohm. So the nonlinearity equals 1.455 kilo ohm over the range 5.6368 kilo ohm minus 0.6005 kilo ohm times 100%, which equals 28.8%. So this is a huge nonlinearity in thermistors. This high nonlinearity is a major disadvantage of using thermistors. In our next episode, I will show you how can we improve this nonlinear nature of thermistors by designing a proper bridge circuit. Okay, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe the channel. Feel free to leave your comment.